training hard for the rigors of space, Canadian astronaut David St. Jacques has put in the hours in the pool and on land and kind of floating over something there. Now he's counting down the months and weeks before blasting off on his upcoming mission to the International Space Station. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, for more on how you actually prepare for something like this, because that looks pretty grueling. <laughs> Uh, you know, it comes step by step in little, uh, little chunks. Uh, the training, I've been essentially in training for nine years, really, uh, ever since I got recruited with Jeremy Hansen uh, back yes. in 2009. And uh, after basic training, I got to work in mission control, which is kind of part of training as well, part of the, the way you get to know how missions are organized, accomplished. And then when I got assigned to a mission, I got back into intensive training, more specific training, how to fly the Soyuz rocket that will bring me to the space station. Lots of time in Russia, lots of time uh, in the pool, perfecting my spacewalking skills. In Canada, perfecting my robotics uh, operator skill. Uh, lots of time also studying uh, science and experiments that I will do uh, on orbit. It's, uh, the plate is full and it fills up pretty much uh, all that time. So you're going in five months from now. That's right. But you are on standby to go in the June mission just in case something happened to another astronaut correct that's yeah there's always you, you're always ready to back up the crew ahead of you yeah and then you touch wood that they go uh, and so they did last time so I was there in Baikonur ready to go uh, a couple of months ago and when I will go, will go in December there will be the next crew there ready to go in my stead should uh, something happen uh, that's a, it's a tradition. That's the way, you know, in space we have a backup for everything. Right. Backup computer, backup engine, backup everything. We also have backup crew. So when did it really sink in that you are going to go and be looking down on us, literally? It's a good question because honestly it's been feeling like space camp for a long time. Right. Uh, all this training and training and training and training and just playing astronaut and <laughs> they throw you know, deadly situations at you in the simulator, and initially they do manage to kill you. Eventually, you find the answer. They manage to kill for you. That's for true. <laughs> for real, of course. But when finally you, they find that you survive everything they throw at you, then you're ready, and it, then then you get into the next phase where, you know, what happened to me when they they start to fit your custom fit a spacesuit for you. And I remember the first time that I tried on that suit that they made for me for the Soyuz. I thought, hey, this is not the old ratty already secondhand suit that we've been using in the trainer for so long that doesn't really fit me. This is pristine and it's exactly custom cut for me. They mean it. They mean to send me to space. So you're in the actual suit yeah. that you're going to go. That's right. And that's when it sunk in. That's when it sunk in. When they, uh, they put me in that suit in a vacuum chamber to try it in a vacuum. Really? And they told me, trust me, it will work. I just find this so fascinating. And I'm sure our viewers at home find it fascinating too because you're only going to be the third Canadian to go on an extended mm -hmm. length in outer space. How does that feel? It doesn't really feel real yet quite. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know I'll be, I know I'll be, I know what I'll be doing technically and I've been training for it. I think it's the psychological aspect that you spend most time preparing for. Leaving your family behind, leaving Earth behind. How am I going to cope up there? Am I going to be happy, really? Which is, which is you know, what we're all striving for. Whatever we do, that's really all we're trying to achieve. So I uh, spend a lot of time preparing my family and myself uh, for this, uh, this long trip. Because it's going to be six and a half months. That's right. Six and a half months in outer space. What will you be doing up there? So let's talk work because you're yes. going to have to have pleasure up there as well and do fun things, but work. So the space station where I'm going is a science laboratory. Mm -hmm. So the point of it is to do science experiments on behalf of Canadian and international researchers. A lot of the research we do is generally on the theme of uh, health care and medicine, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, the orbital laboratory is a great place to study. You're a doctor. I'm a physician myself. Yeah. And it's not, it's not only because of that. It's because going to space is bad for you. And it's bad for you in ways that resemble real disease. Hmm. But these problems that afflict astronauts, they develop really quickly in otherwise healthy individuals. So it's really easy to study medicine on an astronaut on orbit. Uh, so it's like the perfect science experiment. So a lot of time spent doing that. And also a lot of time, of course, fixing whatever breaks. I mean, we've <laughs> got to keep this, our home working and the space station is the machine that keeps us alive. So I would say about half our time is spent working on science and half our time repairing or doing preventative maintenance 
doing spacewalks using Canadarm, the robot that built Space Amazing. Station. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, and also uh, doing outreach events like this to, to tell the story of the Space Station. And we truly appreciate that. Thank you, Thank you David St. Jacques.